Shabbat Shalom, everyone. This is Shabbat Hagadol, the great and awesome Shabbat preceding Passover in which we are to ready ourselves physically, but ever more so soulfully for the festival of freedom, for Pesach. Our tradition attributes to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai the authorship of the book of Zohar, the seminal work of the Kabbalah, the medieval Jewish mystical literature. And in the Zohar, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai proclaims, Oilo lemishe choshev. Woe to he or she who thinks that the Torah is mere epic narrative, mere stories, literary stories. And the greatest rabbi of our time, Rabbi Jonathan Henry Sachs, the former chief rabbi of the UK and the Commonwealth, augments another layer on Rashbi, and says, as befitting a great philosopher, the Torah is truth as story, meaning underlying the seemingly simple, deceptively simple epic garment of simple stories, there lies incredible timeless insights about the vicissitudes of the human condition and the Jewish condition. Insights that will continue to loom large as long as eyes can see and men can breathe, as one William Shakespeare once puts it. Beloved friends, ladies and gentlemen, Jewish brothers and sisters throughout the world, we're facing a unique Passover. And every Passover during the holiday, on the seventh day of Passover, we read a story. The story which describes the splitting of the sea as we exited Egypt en route to the Sinai and Pharaoh's army was chasing us. It's a beautiful story. Children love it. There's even a Hollywood rendition of it. But what is its underlying meaning Kabbalistically, theologically, philosophically speaking, the splitting of the sea, the miraculous survival of God's people, and the drowning, the demise of the greatest empire the ancient Near East had known, Pharaoh's Egypt. To understand that, we need to remember that once upon a time, the Germanic Emperor Wilhelm II asked one of his aides, a foremost diplomat, Give me a proof for the existence of God, as if such a thing is possible. God is spiritual, infinite, abstract. You cannot lend empirical credence to spiritual truth. Nevertheless, one of Wilhelm II's aides told him, you want a proof for the existence of God? The Jews, the Jewish people. How come all the other ethnicities which surrounded all the other nations, the Jewish people, the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites, they have all been relegated to the dusty bookshelves of history and only the Jewish people is an Amolam, which means both an eternal people and a global cosmopolitan people. How come we're still around? Asked the German philosopher of history, Ger Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. How come every Shabbat after we read the Aftarah, the prophetic scriptural section, we thank the Almighty who promised us in his holy name, that our candle shall never be extinguished. Every morning service we read twice Psalm 20, which states, the great historical empires, the Roman Greek empires, the Soviet Union, they hinged their existence on horses and chariots. 
on what Paul Kennedy, the Harvard scholar, called iron and gold in his magisterial work, The Rise and Fall of Great Empires. Only the Jewish people invested its existence in faith, in spirituality. And so, beloved friends, the story of the splitting of the sea is the story of the greatest miracles in geopolitical history. That one tiny nation from the ancient Near East not only survived two millennia in the absence of political sovereignty, but became a great world leader in the history of ideas, the ideas that fashioned the moral and political furniture of humankind, the idea that we're all created in God's image, which paved the road to democracy and human rights and all the great political virtues of our time. The fact that we defied historical gravity and all the tyrannical, totalitarian, authoritarian powers from Stalin's Soviet Union to National Socialism all the way to Pharaoh's Egypt have been relegated to the waves of history. They drowned in the sea of history and we continue. That is the political, historical meaning of the story of the splitting of the sea, which we read every Passover. Secondly, the story of the splitting of the sea is also an invitation to each and every one of us to live in soulful greatness. Once upon a time, there was a gigantic figure called Rabbi Yekutiel Yehuda Halberstam, who was the rabbi of the Sephardic Hasidic community in Romania. And then came the Holocaust, and Rabbi Halberstam was sent to Auschwitz with his wife and 11 children. And he made a vow, he made an oath, that should he survive this hell upon earth, this inferno, this genocidal hell upon earth, he will dedicate his life to bringing more life and more holiness to the world. And Baruch Hashem, thank God, Rabbi Halberstam survived the Holocaust. But his wife did not. And ten of his children did not. They perished in the death camps. His one surviving child passed away from typhus after the war. What did this man do? In the displaced persons camp, as a survivor of genocide, he raised money for Torah, for spirituality, for light, for hope. He went to Mexico, the United States, raised money for tour. Then he settled in Israel and he established a Hasidic municipality called Kiryat Sanz, just north of the coastal city of Netanya, north of Tel Aviv. And then he fulfilled his vow, his oath from Auschwitz, that should he survive, he will dedicate his life to holiness, to bringing more life in place of death, more hope in place of despair, more Jewish souls. To paraphrase what Rabbi Sachs said about the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Halberstam also made an undying oath that as the Nazis searched out every Jew in the world with hate, he will dedicate his life to bringing more Jewish souls to this world with love. And so he established a hospital in Israel called the Laniado Hospital. That's how he lived up to his promise to the Almighty. And from then until now, many, many, countless thousands of souls came into this world. Jewish souls, Christian souls, Muslim souls. That's how Rabbi Halberstam fulfilled his vow. And Rabbi Halberstam remarried and had more children who became great Torah scholars and giants in their own right. And he authored innumerable works of Torah and sanctity and holiness and truth. And he also authored his entire commentary on the Torah called Shefa Chaim, which means the abundance of life. The abundance of life. This is Rabbi Halberstam. People like Rabbi Halberstam are like a spiritual Everest. We can behold their stature in admiration and awe. 
and only strive to emulate their greatness. People like that also defy history. They also exemplify the splitting of the sea. The world is exploding. They lose everyone and everything, but they remain internally unscathed, intact. In Kabbalah and Hasidism, we call this hishtavut, equanimity. The person who has such monumental inner reservoirs of faith and cleaving dvekut to Hashem, even genocide is mere noise, external noise to such a person. So, beloved friends, as we face shoulder to shoulder with the rest of the human family, this unprecedented health crisis in the history, not only of modern times, but human civilization writ large, let us have perspective. We are the people who seven decades ago lost one out of three members of our people to genocide. God's eternal people fears not the long road to freedom and God willing the shorter route, the shorter path to healing. Remember, our people has gone through far worse crises and so did this world. Seven decades ago, 50 million people died, were murdered because of the folly of Nazi and fascist atrocities. Let us connect to the inner fountains of our tradition, of Torah, of unconditional love of every Jew, and complete respect and solidarity with the entire human family. Allow me to end on a quasi-humorous note. When I was a kid, one of the TV shows I liked to watch was the Transformers. Some of you might remember this song, Transformers more than meets the eye. In this world, there is more than meets the eye. The olam has ne'elam. Inside the world, there is the concealed presence of God. And what do they say about the Transformers? Unbeatable, indestructible. That is the Jewish, peop- that is the Jewish spirit, and that is the human spirit, when it is utmostly attached to its divine origin in God Almighty, In the infinite one, blessed is he. Connect to God. Embrace your family, your friends, your fellow Jew, your fellow sapiens, your fellow human beings, your fellow Americans. And Be'ezat Hashem, we will emerge from this crisis strengthened, more humble, and more able to love and respect each other and celebrate this wondrous journey we call our life. Shabbat Shalom, and in advance, happy festival of freedom.